All right, so today I want to introduce you to the sulfur ball python. The sulfur is really close to the fire. As a matter of fact, a lot of people think sulfur and fire are the same exact gene, although I would tend to disagree. I'd say when it comes to the differences between sulfur and fire, if you look at the super sulfur, there's, let me tell you, there's nothing that really looks as intense and high contrast as the super sulfur. And essentially, if you take either one of them, the super fire or the super sulfur, they're all white snakes with black eyes considered to be in the black eyed leucistic but they have a little bit of yellow coming right down the top and I say when it comes to the fire the fire has a little bit of yellow but the super sulfur usually has quite a bit of yellow in the the super form it's kind of interesting so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to morph market and I want to show you some of these differences between sulfur and fire all right, so I'm jumping over here on morphmarket.com and I want to start with a sulfur. This is what a sulfur looks like. And at first glance, you probably think this is pretty close, kind of almost like a normal ball python. I say it's a really subtle morph by itself, similar to fire, but you can definitely tell the difference if you actually hatch them out and you have a whole clutch. Some of them are normal, some of them are sulfurs. I actually hatched out some fires this year and let me tell you, if you sit them right side by side with a normal, you can definitely tell. I'd say in most cases, it kind of has a different base color than the normal. Uh, it, usually I'd say for the fires it's like a little more of a khaki color, kind of a creamy color. I'd say this is kind of an exception. This is a little bit different. Some of them are a little bit yellow. Some of them are kind of like a, like a khaki, kind of a brown, almost like a camouflage color. So I kind of wanted to show you the difference between this one. This is a sulfur and this one is a fire. And if you actually compare them side by side, I'd, I'd say it's a little bit different because there's so many different variabilities of each gene and I tried to get two that were kind of close together in color and appearance and it's, it's kind of interesting the fires definitely break up the pattern and you really don't get the alien heads and I kind of noticed on the sulfur you almost get a little bit of alien heads kind of popping out but in most cases it seems like it kind of eliminates the alien heads so first what I want to show you is I want to show you the super form of both of these this snake right here is this is a super sulfur. This is so amazing. I can't even believe it. And let me tell you, I haven't really found any super fires that look anything even remotely close to this. There's some of them with almost the same amount of yellow, but they're not like a really bright yellow with this much contrast and definition between the whites and the yellows. This is really awesome. And I think if you just <laughs> if you just bought you know the super sulfur and bred it to a super sulfur and had a whole clutch of super sulfurs, I think you could do really well selling some of these snakes these are pretty awesome as a matter of fact we could take a look at the price here this one sold for four hundred and fifty dollars back in 2018 so it's been a couple years but it's kind of interesting there's not a whole lot of people that are actually into the super sulfur which makes it a little bit more challenging to actually compare them because there's not that many to choose from over here on morph market and if you compare the super sulfur to the super fire, this is kind of what the super fire looks like. And I would say there's, I'd say in most cases, the super fire has some yellow down the top. I'd say this is pretty much a typical amount of yellow. It's not quite as bright and intense as the super sulfur. Well, however, I have seen some exceptions where they have a lot more yellow, but not quite the definition of the super sulfur. So this is an interesting gene. This is the Disco, and believe it or not, the Disco is actually a Lelic with fire and sulfur. So you can actually breed the Disco with the sulfur, and this is what you get. You get a sulfur Disco. Take a look at this. This is an awesome snake. This has both genes in it. So if you breed this to something else, half the offspring come out as Disco, half of them come out as sulfur. And it's the same thing if you actually have a, sulfur, uh, a Disco fire, it works uh, the same, it almost looks exactly the same as the sulfur disco. Here's another one that's actually a Lelic with sulfur and fire. This is the vanilla. It's pretty awesome morph. This is what happens when you mix vanilla with the sulfur. You kind of get almost the same looking snake. This is actually what they call the sulfur cream. And if you're wondering about the prices on these, these are really reasonable. This one was only $150, a pretty awesome snake. And it's, it's kind of interesting. You can actually kind of cherry pick some of these combos. And I was kind of looking through like the sulfur and the fire. And I'd say in most cases, it's kind of hard 
hard to actually work these into other genes and get really impressive results. One of the things I really didn't see with the sulfur is some of the combos when you mix it with pastel or orange dream and you mix it with other genes. So fire, in my opinion, is really a lightening and enhancing gene and it works really well with pastel and orange dream and you mix, you know, pastel, fire, orange dream and you mix it into other combos. Essentially what that does is it brings out the yellows and the oranges, makes for a really bright, colorful snake and really cleans it up, makes it, you know, kind of the background cleans up the white and makes it really defined, a lot of contrast. And it'd be interesting to actually take the sulfur, which I haven't seen a lot of, and mix it with the pastel and the orange dream and then mix other genes on top of it to see if it's actually kind of the same thing with the sulfur, maybe even better than the fire, which would be awesome. So here's another one that I wanted to show you. This is actually a clown. Clown is a recessive mutation. Clown is, I kind of consider it the king of combos when it comes to recessive morphs. As a matter of fact, when I first started in ball pythons, I was looking at all these different genes and everyone was crazy over the clowns. And if you look at the snake, it's like not really that impressive. And you don't really, you can't really wrap your head around the clown until you start mixing it in with other combos and you get some really amazing stuff. This is what happens when you mix sulfur with the clown take a look at this and i can kind of see in a lot of these combos if you're mixing sulfur in it seems like you get a lot more yellow and a lot more definition than if you're working in fire which is kind of interesting it's kind of one of the big differences between the fire and the sulfur the sulfur i think it kind of gets its name because it's similar to fire but you're bringing out a lot more yellow in the snake than you do typically with the fire i actually got a fire clown here i wanted to show you this and just just compare the difference and this is what the fire clown looks like and of course there are variations of a theme if you look at different snakes but usually when you mix in fire with some of these combos essentially what it does is it lightens it and you have to actually mix it with the right combos to actually get the really high contrast and it seems like with the sulfur we're getting more contrast and a lot more yellow than with the fire. So here's another one. This is the black pastel. It's a dark morph. It's actually, if you have the super black pastel, it's almost a completely black snake. It works really well with a lot of combos if you're into the dark morphs. This is actually makes, it actually makes the panda pied, which is a completely black and white snake. If you have the super black pastel and the pied makes for a really impressive combo. This is what happens when you mix the sulfur with the black pastel. Take a look at this. And this is kind of interesting because if you actually notice, it has a really dark background and it really kind of brings out some of the color a lot of the yellow in the snake and if you actually compare the black pastel sulfur with the black pastel fire take a look at this this is actually what the fire does and you definitely tell there's a difference here and it's kind of interesting because I'm not sure if it's you know I'm just looking at different snakes maybe it's the different exposure maybe people kind of process these pictures a little bit different but from what I'm seeing pretty much you know across the board it seems like the sulfur is bringing out a little bit more of a darker background and kind of popping this yellow out and a little bit more than the fire it's kind of an interesting kind of a effect to the sulfur so here's another one. This is the Mojave. The Mojave is in the blue-eyed leucistic. You breed two Mojaves together, you get an all-white snake with blue eyes instead of the black eyes like the Super Fire. This is what happens when you mix the sulfur with the Mojave. Take a look at this. This is a really awesome combo. And let me tell you, I've never seen any fired Mojave look anything like this. This almost looks like it has pastel or something really bright in there, which is kind of surprising. Such a really big difference. So let's compare the sulfur Mojave to the fire Mojave. Take a look at this. This is <laughs> completely different than that last thing. You can definitely tell there's an effect. And it's kind of interesting kind of going through these. There's a lot of people that are saying that these are the same. They kind of pick out examples where they can set them side by side. But I'm actually seeing some really amazing examples in the sulfur that is, I, I don't think you can really make anything even close with the fire. Of course, you can kind of pick examples of both where they almost look exactly the same, but I think there's some rare exceptions. There's, there's quite a few exceptions where I'm seeing the sulfur actually is a little bit better than the fire in, in my, in, kind of in my, just kind of the, the snakes that I'm pulling up here in my opinion. 
Here's another one. This is the Lemon Blast. Lemon Blast is really common. I produce quite a few of these. This is actually the pastel and the pinstripe makes for a really awesome combo. This is what happens when you mix sulfur in with a Lemon Blast. Take a look at this. And essentially what it does is it kind of breaks up the pattern and gives it more kind of a, like a creamy color all through here. Brings out a little bit more white in the head if you kind of go back to the Lemon Blast. Usually Lemon Blasts have a pretty dark head and when you mix in the sulfur it definitely brings out uh, a lighter head and here's a uh, fire instead of sulfur if you kind of compare the two you can definitely tell the sulfur is bringing out a lot more yellow but you still get kind of the same effect where you're getting the lighter head and kind of a creamier kind of a background but it still really breaks up it's I'd say the, the jury is still out if sulfur and fire are the same thing but for pretty much from what I'm seeing I think the sulfur is the winner in a lot of these combos all right, so what is time for the question of the day? And Sheila McIntosh asks, have you ever put toilet paper rolls in with your mice and rats for something to hide in and to chew on? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, when you empty out your paper towels or your toilet paper rolls, you actually have the little core in the middle. It's a little round cardboard thing, and I used to put quite a few of those in with my rats and mice. I actually found out that with my rats, they can actually get stuck in those rolls of toilet paper. I actually had one get stuck in there, and I actually had to kind of perform surgery and clip it with scissors and get that thing off of the rat. Let me tell you, he wasn't very happy. And now what I do is if I actually put it in there, I'll actually cut them long ways and I'll cut them in half and I'll put two halves in there. They definitely like to chew on something. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people that recommend putting little blocks of wood in every rodent tub. Some people say that if you're using really cheap tubs, some tubs that they can actually chew through. A lot of times the blocks of wood will keep them from chewing through the tubs. Although I use ARS caging racks and I never really had a problem with the rats chewing through the tubs thank goodness that's kind of one of my biggest nightmares is you know rats chewing through the tubs and getting loose in the house that would be terrifying rats running around tearing up the place and that's kind of one of the reasons I bought some really high-end racks from ARS caging because the tubs are really super tough no chew marks at all on any of the tubs and it's kind of interesting I actually have some rats that every now and then they'll get a tooth that is a little bit longer than the other one sometimes it sticks out a little bit and a lot of people say if you put little blocks of wood in the rodent tubs a lot of times that'll help kind of trim down their teeth and keep their proper kind of oral hygiene for your rats you definitely probably want to consider putting little blocks of wood in every single rodent enclosure so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video